Let's see what it does. Engine running, engine running, engine running, engine running. She doesn't want to run. Let's try this again. Okay friends, time for another chapter. We're back up here in the Catskills, it's October, and it's time to actually put this car together and drive it home. Let's Look, do it. We got a note. If you are interested in considering selling this van, I would be very interested. Please contact me, phone number. That's cool. I like getting those. there. Ooh, another note. Let's see what this one says. Well, so that one says this vehicle is not for sale. And they put this note right in front of it. Hi, if you're considering this, we'd be very interested. Cool. Well, we've got our shitty grill, we've got our engine, and we've got some parts I brought up. So we are ready to go. Let's put it together. Look at all these things. I put so many things in here. So the big issue today is getting this one bolt out that holds the fuel tank straps in. I worked on this before and really rounded it off and it does not want to come out. Once we get this bolt out and we can get a new bolt in, we're good. We can start putting things together. Till then, this is a big roadblock. So here's the bolt in question. And I've got that head down from a 13 all the way down to about a 10. This all wasn't rusted out, but just so much impact on that has already basically destroyed this shelf. If I can get that out and I can get a new bolt in, that has enough structure still to support the fuel tank strap, but we gotta get that out and that is not gonna play nice. It's time to heat it up. We're gonna start with our more fire and we might need our less fire, but this, this should work. The gas tank is completely drained. It's been draining for a month. There is no gas at all. Let's do it. No, the bolt is out. This shelf really dissolved but I think it's got enough strength to hold up one strap for a little while. I think the game plan then is gonna to be to put like an angly bracket, self tappered into there, but I think I'll be able to get that strap in and I think it'll hold the tank up till it gets home. Well, we got the straps on, they're all strap and stuff. I reused the old, uh, you know, the top piece, this piece. Um, I don't know how you replace those with the tank in, but Everything's good. It's up, it's secure. It's somewhere between temporary and full-time. It'll work, probably, till it doesn't. Let's see, there's our motor. Look at it. It's cute. It's dirty. Let's take it Take apart. off everything on the top of the motor, making it shorter so it fits in better. Put things back on when it's in there. We've got a fancier intake all cleaned up and stuff. So we're just gonna take all this off, take all that exhaust off gonna run those stainless exhaust system yeah let's just strip it we down. got the intake off and now it's just time to make it cleaner because it's disgusting so we've got a drill with a one of those and we'll give it a few of those yes look at that but more effort that was a long day of cleaning but that is a stripped down engine, nice and clean, really thoroughly cleaned and ready to be built back up. This is the problem. This is a bolt, not a stud, and it broke off and it does not want to come out. I've done lots of heating, lots of vice gripping. We got to get that out. And that, that's a problem. Silas welded this nut on, uh, and hopefully once it cools, we can pop that off. Movement. Oh yeah. It's moving real nice. It's really chewed up in there. Oh, I'll tap it. Oh, that is some satisfying. Holy crap. Well yeah. done. Well, this seal actually looks to be in really good shape and fairly fresh. Um, someone's been in there and they greased it, but it doesn't look like it leaks. So I might not replace that seal, which is a controversial thing. I brought one in case, but this pilot bearing is completely failed. It has no needles left in it. We have to get that out and they do not come out easily. So let's get this party started. This is the, we got a new pilot bearing in and uh, 
we're gonna replace this main seal. There's a lot of contentious issues with these main seals. There's a wrong way to do it, there's a right way to do it, there's a wrong seal, yada, yada, yada. We're gonna put in this L-ring seal from Go Westy, and we're gonna use this fancy installation tool. So we're gonna show you how we do this. And hopefully this will be the last time this ever gets a seal. one out, put a big old gouge in there, hit it with some of the papered sand, and at least it's ruined. We'll see. We'll throw it in anyway, it'll leak inevitably and we'll throw out the motor. It's all doomed, there's no hope left. Just drilling a hole in the engine. That's super uncomfortable, but you know, this should work. Let's check. a new hole. Everyone needs new holes in their engine. I don't know. I did it. I'm committed. Let's see what it does. Hopefully those chips aren't in the engine, but we'll change the oil right after. I don't know, because there's like, you know, we just drilled a giant hole in the engine and all of that crap. I don't know. I trust them. Let's send this it. This tool's really awesome for getting this seal in perfectly, perfectly straight. This is really controlled. I like this. We put a little Permatex anaerobic gasket maker on the outside of it. So here's the seal and it's it's past flush. I I followed the directions. I don't know. I I would have thought this would have a little flange out here that would catch that outer lip. So and it doesn't. So this is apparently where they want it. I thought flush was right, but I don't know. That's where we're running it. Let's see what it does. Clutch is on. I put a 15,000 mile used clutch disc on that's in better shape than this one. This one's got looseness and rattly bits so uh, but i reused the pressure plate and all that clutch is on doing the oil pump now gonna put in the go westy bigger one so pulling this off i've never done this before learning a lot we've got the go westy bigger high volume oil pump on here with some permatex uh anaerobic sealant and this should give us good oil pressure I'm putting these pipes back on. They're just used ones. I am not replacing the water pump. The reason being that water pump, we should believe to be good. It was on this engine, this engine was running. And the only water pump I have available is the lowest quality one available. So we can always do that later, but that should run. Let's keep putting it together. I replaced this oil sender. I did not replace this oil sender, which is definitely the wrong one, but I don't have the right socket for it. So. If there are oil pressure issues, or there's believed to be oil pressure issues, I bet you it's that guy. All right, gotta switch over a few things because synchros have different oil fill necks than two wheel drives. See, it's a little bit different. Same with the dipstick tube and a couple other things. Let's do it. Let's get back at it. Now we're gonna put some studs in the engine. Anyway, we are installing these ARP studs. I get these on Amazon, I'll post the link. Um, it's like $100 worth of exhaust studs to do studs all around. They're very expensive, but they are a super premium product. We install these with plenty of anti-seize, and these are absolutely gonna come out when you need them to and not break and not corrode. This is the best solution to the Vanagon exhaust problem. I've got this thermostat housing that I cleaned up and painted and stuff, and we gotta put an O-ring on here. The factory one is yellow and it's special and it's notoriously weird. And I don't have one in my box of gaskets. So we're gonna use this red one, which I don't think is correct. When it fails, it's probably because of that. We're gonna get this, uh, they call this the mustache bar. Gonna get this fully restored. So what I did is hit it with brake cleaner and we'll give it some of the Rust-Oleum gloss blacks. Give it the tss. And then it's done, forever. Could I do more prep? Yeah. Yep, definitely could do a better job on this, but it'll be good enough. The engine's coming along real nicely. You got all the sparky things on and the new Go Westy alternator harness and fuel injectors and things and well this is the wiring harness we're gonna run this came with this engine but I put it in this Harbor Freight toolbox which is now full of water which means that was fully submerged 
But more importantly, that was fully submerged. So that might be no good no more. I don't know. We'll put it in the sun for a while. Hopefully this uh, still works because this is important and I really was relying on it. So don't buy this toolbox and put it outside. Ooh. Well, that took some effort, but I got the uh, main fuel injection wiring harness out of the bus. Um, it had some chewed through wires and stuff, so we're replacing it with one that came with the Vermont engine. Known good, worked well. It's not perfect, but I spent some time cleaning it up. We'll snake the old one out, snake the new one in. There Should we be go. Good. We put some new brake lines on. Just the two that go that way and then this way. This one's a little weird. Anyway, cleaned up all that rust, so now we're gonna just whack it with some of the Eastwood heavy duty anti-rust. This will give that nice black waxiness and that'll be protected forever. It'll be good, you can spray it on every song. Give it the shakes and just... This is my buddy, Matt. Matt flew in from Seattle for Maker Camp and he's uh, gonna be helping us build up this bus too. I'm gonna try, real hard. Matt's got two Vanigans and some experience, so. Let's, Let's get see to what it. you think. Um, so I really like the bodywork. The bodywork is is fucking cherry. Um, cherry. And the, the it's tire, been fully restored. Yeah, the tires the, the tires will get you there. Uh, I like that the missing lug nut is, is. That's important. It is. It's par for the course. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. mostly filled with parts right now well it's definitely less mousy um than the previous video so that, that's nice that, that's really nice that's good um it's in better shape than i thought yeah so yeah no no we'll, we'll, we'll get it running we'll, we'll get the engine in and, and and get it running um this is the transmission no one stole it last night that's good that's good 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 so no one no one scrapped it out no they scrapped off my catalytic converters over there either <laughs> i keep a pile of them oh this is we've got two full exhausts these this this pile is getting smaller as the things go on the car but yeah. there's still a lot of things in the pile we're putting that go westy stainless exhaust on you got the full headers in that bag um the heat shield's in pretty bad shape. We could pretty it up, but I don't think I'm gonna put the effort in. Mm -hmm. That's the motor, wrapped in the tarp, like a expensive taco. We've got <laughs> a round headlight grill to put on because the squares, well, the squares are squares, but also, yeah. you know, they, yeah. they have these features. No, no, it, it's shocking that it didn't come with a South African grill. It really is. Well, it was parked in 2000. Yeah. Uh. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Al already. Already People. somebody's trying to buy her. Yeah. There's one note on the car and someone uh, stopped by to try to buy it two days ago. That's uh, that's fantastic. Well, um, I mean, you know, you, you did the right thing. You called me out. You got the medium guns here. So uh, we'll, we'll see what we, we have. Do. We have bigger guns coming. <laughs> um, yeah. Synchro transaxle. Look at there. Non-locker. Garbage bag. Yeah, yeah non-locker. Huh. The gar garbage bag is camouflaged for how much it's worth. That's that's why I put it in the garbage bag. All right, 2.1. And I'm going to put a new water pump that just flew in from Eugene. All right. So in this clip, Matt's putting a new water pump on. Matt was super integral to this process, and I'm so thankful he came. We could not have done this without him. So one of the things we're doing here is we are uh, replacing all the shift components while we're in there because I'm sure they suck. They just always suck and it's easier while it's apart. So this shift bushing is in horrible shape and it's all greasy and gross and cir not circular and stuff like that. Well, our friends over at Go Westy sent us these ones. This is their new product. This is a Teflon solid bushing and you don't have to lubricate this at all. So you just clean up your shift shaft, you toss these bad boys on and you're in for some good two finger shifting. Supposedly. I haven't used these yet, but I'm really excited to. And I hate greasing my shifter. So this way you don't have to grease your rod. Wait, that sounds bad. Yeah, hang on. I'm going to talk to the camera. We're also going to replace this component. These go bad. This becomes an oval. This one's not too ruined, but this fancy one from Go West, he's billet aluminum and it never wears out. And it makes your shifter real nice. You need this and the ball that attaches to it. And then you're done. 
So let's put this oh, on. Looking at this seal, that doesn't look right. It looks like it's kind of not there. So I bet we're gonna have a big leak there, but we can replace that later. So I'm just reusing this boot because it's a good VW one. And uh, yeah, that, that definitely is suspect though. Another thing we're gonna replace is this bad boy. This little junction-y, coolant -y bit. Um, these fail. These plastic components that are 35 years old, this cap pops off, you lose all your coolant, you overheat your engine and you ruin everything. It sucks and it happens all the time. Luckily, our friends over at Go Westy make this stainlessy boy that's all TIG welded and delightful. And this will bulletproof things so that you don't have to worry about that. So we're gonna toss this bad boy on and have reliability. Well, these pipes failed. They do this, this is kind of a predictable thing they do. The metal insert gets pushed out through some rust. We'll cut this ring off. We'll hammer this back in, maybe use a heat gun a little bit. And uh, then we have we have a fix. It's stuck. Just give it a little, yeah. So we put a, we creased the tip. He just gotta wiggle it. <laughs> Sweet talking. Yeah. Take it to dinner first. Let's go. You're able to wiggle your tube into the hole now? Yeah, 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 okay. it's going in. Yeah. Good. Switching over to the synchro dipstick. Oh yeah. Matt was having some issues getting it in, but we worked together on that. The devil's triangle. So, uh, we gotta fix that pipe. And to fix that pipe, we really wanna heat it up with a heat gun and tap tap with our little you know tap stick but we don't have a heat gun because we don't have any power um we tried to get power we don't have power so old torch i don't know maybe this will work let's try it That's how you do field repairs. That'll work. We're gonna test this starter out here. Um, we brought a replacement, but if we can get away with this one, that would be great. So let's, is that on? I don't know, maybe that was on? Let's see what it does. Again, so that's on, that's on. We have 12.8, this should start. No spark at you. Yeah, let's see, we brought one with us. Let's see if this one works. Yep. It should do that. It should. Yeah. It should, have, it should have been rotating, but yeah, that's probably fine. Okay. This one's garbage. That one's good. What's up? So I, I took it off. I tested it. Um, I've got a bunch of corrosion here on the ground. Yeah. Um, and so what's happening is it's not properly grounded to the bell housing, but. Oh, that's a good start. Let's run that. All right. Yeah. So Matt just got stung by a yellow jacket and they've been hanging out with me. I think I've been getting along well with them, but he just found out that they live right there. They're, this is the, actually their home. We, I guess, should evict them. So, I mean, I don't think they possibly actually live there, but they might. Goodbye, my friends. Oh, now they're mad. Nope, they live there. Fuck. We fucked up. Okay, we might damage the paint, but it's brake cleaner time. Hey guys. Well, that killed him. Did it melt the paint off the car? Probably. Well, let's take this off and see if they live where their residence is. Found their home and made them go away. Goodbye. Transmission's under there. Engine's ready to go. We're just gonna put it under there and then do a mating ritual together. Do you not, have a, not together? Do you have a mating ritual you usually do? No, not no. Stopped moving. Yeah. Here's why. We've that's oh, we failed. Broke it. We broke we it. We broke it. It's super broke. It's <laughs> that's the most oh. broken. That's fine. <laughs> Well, eh, can't say I've done that before. <laughs> you know, more or less in place, we gotta get the engine up a little to mate to the trans, and the jack under there, and then lift her up. Basically, these mounts will pick up up there. Oh, we're getting her lifted a little bit. It's a little cattywampus, need an extra set of hands, so we got Silas from across the street coming in. 
But yeah, it's doing stuff. Things are happening. So Matt, what just happened? So we're sitting here taking a, a little bit of a, a rest uh, yeah. after getting the engine in. Enjoying a cold snack. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, this guy pulls up and he says, hey, uh, I've got one of those. I'm about 15 minutes down the road and it's in a field. You want to come buy it? Yeah. So a guy just told me, he's like, yeah, it's four wheel drive. It's got a locking diff. Uh, it's got a Tico engine in it. It hasn't driven in seven to nine years and I will sell it to you. And I'm 15 minutes down the road. So we got his phone number. And we're go and we made an appointment. We yep. got his address. We're going, going to go morning. look at it tomorrow. First thing. Yep. This is how this happens. I keep tripping over these. I told him straight up what my offer is, and it's he not high. He didn't blink though. He he didn't I didn't yeah. didn't budge. I I he'll, he's gonna sell it to you. I'm gonna buy that car again. It's an early start and we're heading off to go look at another bus. Uh, this guy pulled up to us yesterday and uh, said, Hey, I've got one of those just down the street and it's for sale. So we're gonna go investigate and it is a foggy day. Let's go check it out. Up and see what's right. hopefully the key. I'm rolling back here. Okay. Right. So the engine is in. So we're back at it after checking out that bus. Uh, Matt's here getting right to it. And I made a punch list of things we have. There's a lot of stuff here, but we put them on the wall. That way anyone can come along, work on a project, when it's finished, tape comes off. There should be no tape on this window when we drive home. There will be. So after two days um, on the ground, uh, engine's in, exhaust system's on, coolant is in, uh, the tires are being put on, and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been another long day. Uh, kind of beat, kind of burnt. Uh, there's just a little bit left on the punch list. By a little bit, I mean a lot. So. But that's, uh, that's where the van is sitting right now. Tires are off. Uh, punch list is there. Uh, not fun. Um, after eight or plus years, uh, there, was, uh, there were some lug nuts that were solidly rusted on. Uh, cheater bar. Cheater bar is how you fix that. The, uh, I gave it all the ugga duggas that the electric uh, impact wrench had, and it... I didn't do it. Um, exhaust is on. Uh, it looks like the tip is touching, so. And we're back. I just went and got myself a 90 minute Swedish massage and I feel great. You should do that. Anyway, we're getting back to work and you can see that it has no wheels and tires on it. That's because we put it on jack stands that we stole from Jimmy and we took the wheels and tires over to a wheels and tires place that is apparently not gonna put the tires on the wheels for the foreseeable future. So that sucks. I don't know how we'll deal with that, but tires have been the weirdest problem with this build. Anyway, wheels are off. Let's fix some brake lines, I guess. I don't know. What else are we supposed to do? This has been a long day. We've absolutely day. killed it. You've killed it. Where are you we? just installed the entire exhaust. <sighs> Take it off. Nice. Well, <laughs> Kurt's here now. Uh, and, uh, Hi, yeah. Did you bring your bus? I did not. Why? It has, it's, it's got a little boo-boo. What did you do? Well, I'm trying to keep it from catching on fire. Again. It does keep catching on fire. So he left in his bus. <laughs> it didn't catch on fire. But it stopped running. So, towed it home, showed up in a regular car. Now we're going to build this. He has to sleep in here tonight with the mice and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. With the family. The back of my car was actually pretty comfortable. So, just hooking things up. And uh, this hall sender wiring is not pretty not the greatest condition. We're gonna put a little bit of liquid electrical tape on it and send it. The uh, hard start relay. Hard start relay. Yeah. We saw yeah. that little wire, where does that go? Yeah, that's some good juice. That should be good enough. Good enough for, good enough for a shutdown government to work. Okay. I think we got to replace that harness with this harness. This is just a sub harness because this is that one's completely missing the oil pressure -y thing. So now you just put that in there and then you stick that in there and you give it the familiar motion and stick this in here. Yeah, stick the hose in the hole. Oh, I remember my first time. There you go. And then give it a couple of shakes. Oh, 
look at that. And now the gasoline's flowing. I love this thing. We'll put yeah. a link. I didn't have to drink any of it either. That was beautiful. It's super easy. I don't really know what this goes to, but it's in horrible condition. So we'll just cut it off and ignore it for now. You, you don't need that. We're ready to start putting juices in. So we'll start with some coolant, some oil. We added some of the gasoline. Um, I don't know. Let's put some fluids in and see what it does. Okay, get in there. We're in. Okay, we're in. So we've put juices in it. Everything looks good. We're gonna do one last look through. I'm gonna look through everything. Then independently, they'll each look through everything. Wiggling, touching, checking, and then we're gonna turn a key. We're gonna make this thing run. a pretty big power steering leak. It's probably the bottom of the tank. We don't have another tank, so we're gonna just go ahead and take the power steering belt off. We don't need that for now. Go through some safety protocols here guys um we're gonna try to fire this up first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the battery look for sparks things like that uh then we're going to crank the key to the first position to see that we have fuel pressure here indicating that the fuel system isn't reversed then we got our less fire device here um less so fire. yeah less fire we're gonna keep that right here if anything else goes wrong remember um the ground side of the battery is on the right it's not going to be tightened just pull it off right? Yep. If we do end up with a fire that's big enough that like we've got to abandon ship, take everything the fuck you can out of that car and put it over there. <laughs> and then we'll move this one. It, uh, we can, we can make a pretty large fire here and be okay. So I think we'll be all right. If it comes to it and it's on fire, take everything out of the car, put them over there. Fire extinguisher. I have my last fire machine. You got the last fire machine. To use that, you simply pull the pin, aim it at the base of the fire, move it in a sweeping motion until the fire is fully ex extinguished or the extinguisher is fully exhausted. At which point, you'll find another fire extinguisher located right there. Is that a six mil for the screw? No sparkage. Battery's at yellow, though. We'll see if, it sh if she'll crank. We are not tightening this so that we can remove it in a... A this pinch. little screw out so we can see if we've got fuel pressureage. Uh, one of you guys want to go turn the key? I got it. Just to the first position, do not crank. Where's the key? You have a key. It's in my pocket. Everyone has a key. <laughs> How many times? Okay, go on again. Go off. Go on again. We've got fuel pump, but hearing it, but no pump yet. It's, it's flipped. Yeah, well, that sucks because I wired those terminals in, and they're they're the only set I have. Okay, go backwards. Off. We we didn't know which was which, so we just have to pop the two fuel hoses off. That's why we left them long, and we'll be good. Um, tires are done. So in theory, we can go pick up tires, and then we have a car. Well, we'll make the engine run first. More electricity, and then. Yep. Turn it. Turn it. Different noise. A bajillion times, Kurt. Just off and on. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, we got fuel. Okay, turn it for real. If it fires up, shut it right off. Stop. Do that again. Stop. Okay, we have crankage. Do that one more time. Okay. Off. Do that again. Stay off. It's alive. It's alive. Nice. Hey. Nice. Beautiful. Well done. All right. That's a running engine. Ah. Cheers, guys. Well done. Rock and roll. I don't think we have. Uh, it's not. It's not leaking. It's just where the the antifreeze boiled over yeah. on the. What did you say, Kurt? We got an oil pressure light and buzzing. We have an oil pressure. Is it buzzing or just the light? Buzzing. Buzzing. Okay. Um, that checks out. Wiring. Uh, interesting. Fire it up. Okay. Yeah, we got we got um, 
We got like vacuum leak type issues. It's I give it throttle and she bogs. It's still blowing out. Um, well, there's no, it's still coolant, out the coolant and stuff and from from yeah. in the muffler. Yeah, the yeah. I mean that didn't want to idle, so that's an odd thing. Um, in the oil pressure system. We just attached the two wires together. Fire it up. Let's see if that shuts it up. Ready? Yep. All right, light and buzzer again. Okay, so light and buzzer. But that just means wiring issues either here or up there. Or up there because that should be... Because there's no... Again, we had light with these connected. Let's try it with them off. I should do the opposite. Fire it up. Ready? Yep. Okay, we gotta diagnose and fix that because that's gonna be annoying. We switched airflow meters. Fired up. Let's see what it does. No, still hesitating. Big time. But it's running. You got an alarm? There she is sitting on her jack stands. She's got our tires back from the tire people. Finally. So let's put them on. The fresh harness, the sub harness. Let's see what it does. It's making a proper lot of smoke. And it's burnt, it's burnt. Oh, it's a proper lot of smoke. Maybe it'll clean up. We know there was a bunch of oil and stuff in the old exhaust. I don't know. We'll let it burn off for a little bit. Let's see if we get temperature. Our oil pressure issues are gone. We have no oil alarm. We have a throttle pedal that works. She's revving up. This has got hesitations and poppiness and stuff. It's not, things are not right, but we'll, we'll get there. Well, I let it run a while. I got it all the way up to temperature. I say that, but there's no temperature indication at all. Um, we got no functional temp gauge even when I ground out the the circuit, so that's kind of weird. And we've got no fuel gauge, and we just replaced all that, so those might be related. Anyway, um, it got I ran it for 10, 15 minutes. I mean, it's running good. It is making a lot of smoke. I believe that's not from this engine. So this exhaust came off an engine that exploded and blew two connecting rods, and the catalytic converter and muffler were completely full of oil and coolant, and I think that's what we're burning off. It does seem like it's smoking less now, so let's just keep running it and see. Well, I think it's about time to let it heat cycle a couple of times, throw some axles on it, and drive it down the street. Yeah, it's time. It's off the jack stand, sitting on its own wheels and tires. The axles are connected. I fixed a brake leak. I should probably flush that. I should test the brakes. Anyway, I'm gonna fire it up and put it in gear. We're gonna, oh, I think the clutch needs to be bled. I gotta fix the hydraulics. We're almost there, it's not. Let's done. try this again. Things are bled, juices are juicing, pedals pedal. Let's make the engine do the vroom vrooms and see if the transmission does the movements. We know nothing about the state of this transmission. That is the biggest, contentious, most insane issue of this whole vehicle. Let's we'll see if it works. With crap. I still think vacuum line. That has me thinking it's the brake booster. 
I just disconnected the brake booster. Let's see if that's any better. It's doing the same thing. Now, now it's surging. It's surging a lot. It's hunting real hard. Let's see if we can't plug that. Put my finger on there. Does it idle better? Oh yeah. Rock solid with my finger over the hole. So there's something deeply wrong with the brake boot. Just needed to warm up a hair or two. Let's put it in gear, see what it does. Clutch pedal activate. Oh, clutch pedal doesn't feel good. Can't get reverse. Could be shifting a linkage alignment stuff. Let's try for a forward gear. That should be first. We have forwardage. We have forwardage. Let's try second. Oh yeah, we're just way off on the shifter. That's, yeah, we're way off on the shifter. We gotta fix the shifter. I got under here to look at some shiftery things, but I was also wondering, hey, let's just take a look at the radiator fan wiring. Oh my God, I'm so happy we didn't burn the car down. This is what we got. It's completely wireless between here and there. And this is, they ate everything. This is just ruined. It's the most ruined it can be. So we're gonna need to build a that. Holy crap. Yep. As I suspected, the ear is missing on this one. And this one's not very good either. So we're gonna use our Go Westy kit to rebuild this. And hopefully that gives us some gears. But it's probably more issue back there. These little tabs, these are key. These make your shifter work. Go Westy sells a kit to replace these. These are 3D printed or something. I don't know how they make these. These are awesome. Get these. I just wish the epoxy was five minute. It's 24 hour. So we're gonna go get some epoxy from our friends at Total Boat. And that should Locked make it work. those tabs on. I haven't glued them yet. Anyway, I've got nice H pattern. Well, not so nice, but pretty good. Definitely distinct gears. And I've got my lockout, so I bet it works now. Let's try it. Come on, old girl, fire up. Play the game. We've been playing this game, come on. You know this game. We play it on weekends. There we go, yeah. Good game. So, no, nope, see, she's not going into, now that the engine's running, mm, it's a clutch issue. Yep, because we're grinding our way into gears. Let's see if, uh, if we, yeah, we don't have much clutch pedalage. So if we start out in reverse and we fire it up and then we let the clutch out, yeah, we have reverse. We have reverse. Yep, she's grinding. So let's try it in first. Clutch in, fire it up. First gear, shut it off. This should be second. Second. This should be third. Maybe. I don't know, but that's good. That's good. Things, I think we need to bleed the clutch more. Hopefully just bleed it, but yeah, that's good. We're, I'm, I'm okay with this. Bled the clutch some, it feels better. Let's see what it does. Engine running, engine running, engine running, engine running. She doesn't want to run. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay, clutch in. I just engaged reverse with the engine running. First, second. Oh, we're good. We've got a car. This is a car now. Nice, what's it moving? Does. So, yep, I'm able to engage reverse. I have good brakes. Let's drive, we're driving. We're driving the car. The car is driving. Holy crap. Whoa. No power steering. That's heavy. Okay, put in a different ECU. Well, that didn't really change anything. Let's put in a fresh brand new coil. Let's see if that works. Oh, that fired up better. It does sound better. 
Do we have hesitation? Oh, it still sucks. Everything still sucks. Still garbage. Still runs like absolute garbage. Yep, it's 2-1 for you. That's a Vanagon. You can throw every part at it and have a ton of knowledge and it's still just going to absolutely suck for no reason. We'll fix this it. This was off. It was probably that. Let's attach, attach the airflow meter. With the airflow meter back on, let's see what it does. Hmm, but does it hesitate? Yep, still sucks. At least it's still horrible. Yep, absolute garbage. Total shit. I'd say our fuel filter's clogged, but that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. In a different idle control computer. Known good one, tested good. Let's see if that does anything. Still sucks. Let's give it gas. Still sucks. Still hot piece of garbage. Won't run. Something is deeply wrong with this car right now. Why? What's requiring so much gas to get it going and then it's running like absolute horse shit? Temp two? Temp two. Could be temp two. Let's replace temp two. We're on a different fuel pressure regulator. That kind of makes some sense. Let's see if that fixes it. Still got a hunting auto, or idle. Absolute garbage of everything. It's a massive vacuum leak. It's it's behaving like a massive vacuum leak. I bet you. I bet you. Stay running long enough. Now we're blowing. We're back pressuring all that. Let's see if we do this. Then we shove that finger in the hole. Nope, still garbage. I should have fixed it. What is wrong with you, water boxer? What you doing? Why do you suck? Can you suck less? It's a choice. It's a choice. Changed out the temp two sender. That's pretty much the last thing that gives input to the engine. So that should fix it, or this thing's got issues. Let's see. Nope, still sucks. Still sucks. Still sucks. It's a choice now. You suck. You suck. It sucks. I don't know. She really is like getting harder to start, so it's time for some go juice. I didn't bring any, but I know Jimmy keeps a can in the back. Let's put a little starting fluid in. This is max starting fluid. I don't know. Let's see what Okay. He found it. Was it a leak at the airport? No, it's a pin out on the, it's a, a pin was pulled out of the wiring harness on the airflow meter. Fired up. Really? Fired up. Yeah, but is that what that is? Is that? Uh, it's broken, but I don't see, you see the inside. Yeah. See, you know how these wires are? Yeah, there's a second shielding yeah, wire on the Yeah, and outside. if it touches the center, then it makes Grounds them it out. run very rich. Um, can you cut it back further? You, you can just cut it and then they won't be touching and you can fix it later. It should run perfectly fine with that cut. How do you fix that otherwise? 
all you need is the center wire yeah, yeah, yeah. going to the oxygen sensor. So you Oh, so you can just cut it stripper. back and strip it and yes, put a regular and, connector yeah, on. Yeah, and that shielding is just to uh, so So well. you just cut it straight. Yes. So that that way it's not grounding itself. So even though it's not hooked up, that's the hack because hacking it back means it's not grounded out. Right. Okay. Right. So start it up again and see what it does. Yep. You're never going to get to that door panel. You're just going to be a starter guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a door panel. I'm not. <laughs> Temp 2 is new. Uh, I've changed the whole wiring harness out. This was okay. a wiring harness out of a, out of, that came with the engine. Yeah. And the engine was a good engine. Um, so. I was gonna have, shut it, shut it off and restart, please. Kurt, shut it off. And it'll run good when it restarts. Right yeah, now. for 30 seconds. Yeah, and then it's trying to. Find sensors, itself. yeah. Go ahead. It's running like garbage, but for 30 seconds, it's perfect. Yeah, start it up again. Fire back up. So there's definitely like some wiring breaks in the, you know, that, but I put some liquid electrical tape over them. They're not shorted out. Yeah, that should be okay. And I never changed the timing on this. I like, did a lot of work without touching that distributor. And... It's different with that unplugged. It's, defer yeah. it's definitely better with that unplugged. I've never had one run better with that unplugged. But why did it just go to horse shit right there. I don't know. like it was at the farm we'll clean it up sorry okay what right. are you doing it's not right but what you can do is adjust this wheel so it takes less pressure off this spring less air to open the flap so it will artificially richen it not the right way to do it but it might make this run okay for right now until we figure out what's up with it i like that plan does it get back get it get us down the road uh, yeah, but I would mark it with a dab of paint so you can easily bring it right back where you got it or Didn't mark it with something. Uh, you got something we can mark it with. Yeah. I'm sure we can put a dent in it or something. Not a sharpie, but black uh, on black is well, bullshit. No, we'll, we'll put it... Knock a tooth off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We'll, we'll do something to mark it well. Chisel so a little tooth off easily... it and we'll put a dot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, tell it to run so richer. basically it's running too lane so we're telling it to run richer by changing where it is in the airflow meter which is artificially basically it's got a bad signal we're correcting that got it incorrectly what do you mean there's well a dot that's what it, it should be adjusted sure 
We can always put it back. Yeah. Airflow meters grow on trees. Or just turn it in odd random places. Yeah, that's the right answer. Do that's random things to it. That's what's gotten me through, yeah. as you can see. Just I am now at the uh, pinnacle of humanity. What do you need? Man, everyone needs to bring in a wizard from time to time. Oh, you spent. It took four minutes for you to make this thing run, not like shit. Yeah. Even if it only ran great for thirty seconds at a time, you did that in four minutes. Okay, start it up. Sounds really, really good. That's like literally one of the best sounding water boxers I've ever heard. It may not let me turn it. but that could totally be that. No, it, it's this. Hi. So good right now. We're getting there. I would like to try it out. Yeah. Also, it hasn't like boiled over. Even though we have no temperature sensor, we would have absolutely oh, yeah. ruined this already no, it's in not, a noticeable way. It's not too high. Is your fan gonna? No, because I cut all the wires. <laughs> you better be careful with that. But temp wise, it's not bad. Sounds, that's drivable. It is. It will have a big hesitation, but I mean, it, it might let you get it back where you want it. Well, right we can now. do that, but that's still not, you know, I wouldn't drive it home. Right, I wouldn't drive it home. Um, one thing I want to check, though, is the uh, make sure the ground wire for the temp sensor is. Oh, check, a check a voltmeter. Yeah. We're cutting open the temp 2 sender wiring, and there are three wires in there, even though we all thought there were two. I, I think it might just join up to only one. Yeah. But anyway, I want to... Do you have uh, little jumper wires? Like, uh, like this? Use, yeah, you can use that one. Cutting, you're making a cut with a knife first so you can get the insulation off the outside without cutting through. Yeah, get the insulation plus the shielding wire. That's that's the bigger issue. Oh, you want to cut the shielding wire? I do. Okay. And then we'll, further up, we will strip the... Uh, the inner insulation. There, there, that's what I wanted to do. Oh, I've never done that. Uh, and then... So that's a pink size, not a blue size. Just waiting on that timer. It's 
30 seconds and then it recognizes the oxygen sensor. Anything, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, <laughs> anyway, car's working great. We've got four people to drive four cars back. We should be good, probably. Yeah, we did it. Once again, we could not have done this without our friend Andrew Flint. That guy is an absolute wizard when it comes to Vanigans. Thank you, Andrew. We could not have done this without you. Get you guys up on the story. So we got the car running and we drove it back late at night on Friday. Yeah, Friday. We uh, we made the 1.4 mile drive back to the resort and uh, and to the campground and and it drove great. Uh, Andrew was amazing. He was able to tweak it. It's not quite fixed, but it's it's good. It's, it's running, we got some off idle hesitations and some issues, and we found a few problems. But it's back here, I've put 10 miles on it so far, running it around town, and it's, it's working pretty well. So, um, but then we lost yesterday. Yesterday we got two inches of rain, it was torrential downpours, couldn't get any work done. So, couldn't even put any test miles on. So now, uh, I'm back at it, it's my last day, we gotta leave tomorrow, so this thing has to work. Um, the plan is in place. Now I need to, fix the power steering whether it works or not it just can't be dripping fluid so trying to fix that and then we have a pretty major wiring issue up front the uh the radiator fan is not wired in at all i had to cut all the wires because mice had already done that so i've got some stuff i don't have what i need but i should be able to put something together and then we can heat cycle it and take it on some bigger trips i want to put at least 50 test miles on it today 100 would be awesome but I got other obligations too. So let's get this car done and let's get it driving. You may have noticed Kurt disappeared. That's because he got sick and had to go home. That's what you get for not sleeping in a VW bus. That's probably because his caught on fire and mine was full of dead mice. Anyway, we couldn't have done it without him, but he disappeared for the rest of this video. This is the bracket for the coolant bottle that was on this engine. It's in horrible shape. So we're gonna switch it out to that one that came with, uh, came with the engine. This is the one that was on the car. Let's swap them. We're gonna change this bottle out too because we've got a temperature light blinking and hopefully this will solve. fill the cooling system up with some of this stuff. Prestone cooling system cleaner and the red juice that's coming out of my ring finger. Um, you give it a little blood sacrifice and the cooling system tends to work better. You hear that? That is this buzzer. That tells you that the key is in. That is a super annoying thing, so I'm gonna show you how to repair that. What you do is you just rip this out with some grace, and you put it there, and you just... Fixed it, it's totally fixed. You can't even hear it anymore. Okay, new wires up here. Let's see if that does anything. I don't know. Here's the ones that came off. They're in worse shape. Uh, there's that one, and there's left of that one too. They chewed right through it, made it wire. Okay, Matt, let's take it for a little test drive. What are we at? We're at 10 miles so far. Let's do more miles. So I need to go that way. You got power steering now. You got power steering? New pump or what? Uh, new hoses, or uh, tank. Look at that. They're test driving. And uh, it's Shannon, she's, uh, we're making sure she's stick shift certified because she's driving it home. Let's do this. Uh -huh. 
I got a temp light blinking. Yep, temp light staying on. We don't have a solution to that yet. Just watch the temp. Didn't feel like that power steering. See, there's that off idle hesitation. That's definitely the throttle body. Yeah. Doesn't feel like you have power steering? Mm-mm. You do. Not. You do. Unless there's a massive cloud of smoke coming out. No? No. Get on the smoke clouds. <laughs> it's got all the gears. How's she driving? It's, I, I would think that it would need a uh, uh, an alignment, but it's driving great. It really is. Yeah, it's not out of alignment. No, the suspension not. even isn't. Like, it's suspension -ing. Yeah, even after sitting for so long, I mean... Yeah, it's, it's drifting a hair, but yeah. no big deal. New tires and everything else. Don't go too fast, they gotta keep up. She's terrified. <laughs> what are your thoughts? It's good, it's tight. Um, I'm real happy the way it sounds and the way it feels. Uh, it's impressive, going from where it started, um, the Hunt-a-Virus van, to driving this thing around, temperature stable, uh, feels good, feels really good. Yeah? Think it'll make it home? I think it'll make it home, I really do. Uh, based on the sound and where everything is, I think you'll be sitting in your driveway with it. I hope so. The fan turned on, <laughs> there is hope. Also, we lost all the power steering fluid immediately, so we no longer have power steering. But we do have a radiator fan, and that, that's a game changer. Okay, well I've moved up to the main field where many things are occurring here at the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp. That way other people can participate in this bus build and I can be social instead of hiding in a parking lot. The next thing we're gonna do is put on round headlights because square headlights are for squares and round headlights are for... Round headlights are better. So we're gonna put them on. Put the rounds on. They're LEDs. They're, uh, I don't know. They're cheap. They're from Amazon. Let's see if they work. Yeah, so you just take your wires and you, oh. There, we don't need that. <laughs> we had the foresight to stop at Jimmy's. And bring the gas can. Yeah, yeah, we knew it was low and we could have brought the gas can, well, but we didn't do that. I didn't know it was low, but. You knew the, you mentioned the truck was acting weird yeah. before we passed Jimmy's. Anyway, I'm here with Ryan. We're on the side of the road. We uh, decided to drive and we have no gasoline. That's, <laughs> that's our theory. Um, <laughs> when we take the fuel bleed thing out of the back, uh, we don't get a good gush of gas and it sort of died in a way that indicates out of gas and the gas gauge doesn't work and I don't know how much gas is in. It started so. with like mostly gush of air but then it yeah. started a little bit of yeah little it bit definitely of seems like we're out of gas so we got plenty of drizzle let's put gas <laughs> you the man that was quick do what i could I, okay uh, we uh matt showed up with four gallons of gas let's see what she does cranking Try it again. That's it, we ran out of gas. It is an early start, but we're gonna make this journey. This is Jeff and Shannon. Shannon's gonna be driving the blue bus. She uh, passed her driver's test. <laughs> and this is your first time driving a VW bus, right? The bus, yes. This is gonna be a lot of fun. And Jeff's in our support vehicle for when we inevitably need a tow. <laughs> um, let's do this. Driving down this country road, and you know, we're what? Oh, to 15 four, miles, isn't it? Yeah, 15 miles in, and uh, somebody's stranded on that the guy side blew of the up road. his car, so yeah, so we stopped. And Jeff's, the guy. Jeff's uh, taking him to s whose house? His friend Jake's house. Jake's He's house. taking him to Jake's house, yes, 
So we're waiting. Um, but the good news is it's we have cell service and it's, we have this amazing view out here. That this doesn't suck. No, it doesn't suck. made it about 200 miles so far. Heidi is running great. Uh, the red light is blinking consistently and I'm doing my best to ignore that. The temperature gauge is working though and we're pretty good. The gas gauge is massively inaccurate. So we're just putting seven gallons in at a time and stopping about every whatever miles. Keeping some mental math, trying to keep her full ish, mid, mid half ish. Anyway, it's running great. Everything's good. Um, the weather's great. I'm pretty cold. I don't have the dash hooked up, so there's no heat. Um, and the stereo doesn't work. It only works on one speaker horribly, so I've got a Bluetooth speaker. Luckily, we have good communications with our Midland radios. I put the, the 15 watt in with the little temporary antenna and we're able to communicate clearly. So we're just gonna keep on going. We're nearing our halfway point, but it's a long trek. made it almost 300 miles so far. What do you guys think? It's been a fun ride so far. What was your favorite road? Uh, probably that one where the, tell me where the bridge was, the, the big arched bridge. Oh yeah, Nichols. That's, that's pretty cool. What about you? Just drive, I don't know what the road is, driving through the Amish country. Oh, 45. Yeah, yeah. can't beat 45. And you like that cat skill section where that guy broke down. Definitely. Pretty Gorgeous. good. Well, let's keep on cruising. and 75 miles so far we haven't had a single breakdown everything is pretty good this car actually the suspension even suspensions it's like driving well hey when i apply the brakes does my third brake light come on the uh the crappy aftermarket one at the top oh, i don't forget on blue the third brake light doesn't work and the shovel is completely covering the right brake light well, that's good to know. The shovel has moved then. It just makes it more fun to be in a convoy with radios. Absolutely. It's hard to believe, guys. We are only five miles from home. We made it all the way without a single mechanical issue. We never had to top off any fluids. We never had to add any zip ties. We never broke down. We never even towed it. That's just a testament to how thoroughly we looked over this vehicle together before we got on the road. 
We have such a great crew, and I'm so thankful for everyone who lent a hand with this project. And some people just cleaned parts, but that's still something. It's, it's so special to have a crew that you can trust and a knowledgeable group of people that aren't too ashamed or too proud to say, hey, check this bolt, check this, uh, check this torque for me. You know, we double checked and triple checked each other's work. And that's why this made it hundreds of miles home without a single mechanical problem. That's incredible. It's pretty wild to think that this is now a car. This thing is driving great. It still needs some work to be a reliable daily driver, but this bus has a story, and its story looked like it was coming to an end. The story just began. I can't wait to share more adventures and share more stories. Hey, thanks for being a part of this team. Thanks for being a part of this crew. Seriously, there's no way we could have possibly done this without you and your support. Your comments, that's what inspires this. So leave a comment, thanks for the support, all that stuff. Tell me what you'd like to see in the next adventure. Or tell me what your favorite part was. You're part of this team, and I'm thankful to have you. Thanks, friend. Yeah, we made it. That was fun. Well, we made it. Cheers. I've never opened one of these without a sword. Okay, here we go. We made it. Cheers.